Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to Creature Caster. Today we paint another resin miniature with cuttlefish colors. We start with a sepia underpainting and then we build up the skin tones from there. Sepia underpainting is basically zenithal and then you paint some sort of brown color, it may be ink or any sepia colored brown and then you build up the colors from that base color. Building up the base colors or in this case the flesh tones on top of the sepia underpainting is very hmm, intuitive. It's like leaving the crevices and the darker undersides of the model sepia is very natural looking. It will serve as your shadow areas. You'll notice in this video that I painted the skin tone with different colors. This time, you can see that we're painting with tainted snow because we're adding some sort of like a sunlight from the top of the skin. So we're just trying to like create a very nice color depth for this very skin dominant miniature. Now we're using purple to add more shadows or add more depth to the undersides and shadow areas of the skin. This will blend very nicely with the sepia underpainting. The sepia underpainting has served its purpose for me, so I painted the rest of the model black. Now it's a matter of building up the contrast of the skin. So now we're stippling and painting some very light colored skin. We're using fairy flesh here and we're kind of defining the raised areas of the skin or the model. We start by using fairy skin which is a very nice pre-highlight color. I call it pre-highlight because I tend to use white or even 51st shade like basically a lighter almost white color for the extreme highlights. I apply extreme highlights, the very almost white color here, the 51st shade by thinning it down into a glaze, almost very thin glaze consistency. Basically, I call it fat glaze wherein I add like a small amount of Merlin's medium to add transparency to the paint. Key here is to kind of use this color to blend all of the highlight areas together and paint it a little bit smaller or bigger depending on your transitions over the fairy skin pre-highlight color. Now we paint the rest of the model. We start with Kevin. Kevin is serving like a burnt umber in this painting. However, Kevin is a bit more saturated. It has a yellow brown tint and it's really nice to build up skulls and leather parts and painting it over the black paint. Just using Kevin over black paint and painting it like around a couple or maybe three passes of Kevin and painting the succeeding layer smaller than the previous layer will give you very nice volume. Now we use Badlands Brown. This color is very red or reddish and it's perfect as an underpainting for our red leather parts or in this case the loincloth. This color is a great underpainting or base color before we paint the vibrant red like sacrificial red. A couple of passes of sacrificial red will give you a very nice red tone for your loincloth. Now again we start with Kevin. We're using Kevin as our base color as we build up the highlights and the colors, the layering of the other parts of the model. Now we build up the layering via glaze layering. I call it glaze layering because cuttlefish colors are pre-glaze paints. Being pre-glaze paints, cuttlefish are a bit more translucent or transparent in comparison to normal paints. You may choose not to add more Merlin's medium to cuttlefish colors then you'll have like a very sketchy feel to your painting and then you could glaze it a bit more later once you build up the color depth and the painting of the base colors of every part of the miniature. 
Do not rely on the glaze properties of the cuttlefish colors when doing layering. I still highly recommend that you mix the previous color with the next color so that you have a really nice layering even though you are painting it with more transparency. This will give you smoother transitions and more interesting color depth to your painting. Painting with a little bit more transparency is kinda unpredictable to be honest but it will assure you of great transitions and very nice unpredictable color depth. Another not so obvious advantage of painting with a bit more transparency is that you create smoother transitions with your highlights. You may decide to stipple and paint the highlights with full opacity and then you could soften this up with a bit of glazes. Using the cuttlefish colors at full opacity meaning you did not thin it too much with Merlin's medium you just add a very small amount is crucial when you're painting details like this one, the ropes and some of the really tiny details of the skulls. So although I said it's kinda unpredictable when you're painting with transparencies, give it like a few models and you'll be comfortable painting in this manner. After you're done painting the skin and the bones and the leather parts of the model, we are now ready to move on to the second, in my opinion, most important part of this model. Now we paint the non-metallic metal iron parts. Painting NMM is super fun. It's one of my fab parts of painting miniatures. Although I would admit that I like painting skin a bit more than painting NMM. But NMM is a close second. I do think painting NMM is a little bit easier than skin because you don't really, in my opinion, have to glaze it too much and blend everything together too much. You could see in the video that I started with a darker gray, ethereal gray, and painted it around the highlight areas of the NMM. And then after I've sketched that part or the highlight areas of the NMM, I then proceed to a lighter gray color which is the mountain. Similar to the painting of the skin, key here is to create very nice volume and dynamics in between the lightest part of the model and the darkest shades of the NMM. It's similar to painting skin in a way because you need to push the contrast, you have to have really nice shades, and you have to have really nice highlights. After establishing a very nice contrast for the NMM, it's a matter of just adding some rust colors and a bit of blue tint. Now we finish off this model by adding some blood effects. I'm using a couple of red colors, a darker red color for like the semi-dried blood effects and a brighter red color for the fresh blood. However, you may want to add a bit of gloss varnish on top of this blood effects to give it a very fresh blood looking effect. Now it's a matter of adding enough blood effects to hide the not so good painting on the miniature. <laughs> now it's time for our reveal. This miniature is from the STL packages from Creature Caster and I had it printed around 75mm roughly and I had a blast painting this mini. Painting a big miniature like this one is a little bit more time consuming so I highly recommend you start painting the base colors like we did here with the airbrush or at the very least with a big brush. So after painting the base colors, it's a matter of just fine tuning your layering or glaze layering and your blood effects and your NMM and you have a very nice big miniature. So although it's a bit more time consuming, this 75mm printed STL from Creature Caster, I had so much fun painting it because it's friendlier for my old eyes. <laughs> so I hope you liked this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed painting this miniature. 
เดชิตเป็นชิต